Hi guys. Well, I think it's supposed to be, according to the weather radar, it is a bright, sunny, blue sky day here in uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm in the Finger Lakes of New York here on Tuesday evening, July, where are we, 21st, 2021. So this is a bright blue sky in the summer of 2021. What you're seeing where the bright blue skies of the Finger Lakes are turned into this smoky, milky white haze. This is from those fires in Oregon, from the bootleg fire. This smoke from the fire has just enveloped the Finger Lakes. What are we? Are we 2,000, 3,000 miles from these fires? And the air quality here, which should be, you know, just absolutely glorious, is looking like uh, downtown LA, I guess. Uh, but it sure does make a beautiful blood red moon, but uh, I'm not here to talk about those fires. I'm here to talk about this beautiful creek. This beautiful little creek. Uh, there is some debate among my neighbors about how many times my little house has flooded from this creek. And so what happens is all the water comes barreling down and fills up the, you know, underneath the bridge. And when it reaches the top of these big, uh, you know, these big conduits, there's two of them. Thank God there's two instead of one. And this is a dam. And it's just like plugging a bathtub and all the water backs up and flows through the house. There is some debate how many times this has happened. The guy I believe the most says since 1985, he says my little house has been underwater four times. The guy on the road crew here uh, told me my little camper, the USS Maggie May, uh, would have been flooded, you know, right up to the ta-da sign. I had, you know, hip campers staying in this camper Saturday night. So last week, now I bought this place in October of 2019 is when I purchased this little house. And... I don't know how many flood watch, flash flood watches there have been uh, when I wasn't here, but for the entire summer last year, which was one of the driest summers in uh, New York history, never had a flash flood watch. And I got up here May 1st, from May 1st to July about 12th, somewhere in there, we never had a uh, flash flood watch last week in a seven day period or seven night period we had not one not two not three not four yeah four we sunday night tuesday night friday night saturday night we were on a flash flood watch uh here it bugs in a jar and uh, fortunately the uh, we were spared four times but good lord guys uh, looking at these videos from now from China you thought you thought those things that what was going on in Germany was bad have you seen what's going on in China today and uh, so while I'm walking around and this smoke-choked wasteland called the Finger Lakes of New York, thousands of miles from the uh, from this fire. I've been dealing all week thinking about flood control. So we're cleaning out the creek and my poor little cornfield. I would say about 50 of my corn stalks came down. Uh, Kevin and I tried, spent uh, this morning trying to stalk my poor corn. I could have lost that entire cornfield. 
So uh, we've been in the process of building the Grand Coulee Dam. The Grand Coulee Dam, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, here, trying to trying to keep uh, the flooding from here. This is what we have been doing to uh, hold back the flood water. So the guy from the highway department came out yesterday. He got a big laugh out of the Grand Coulee Dam. He said, dude, he said, when that wall of water comes down, it will knock out the Grand Coulee Dam. So he was actually here about five years ago. It's hard to see what all he did. And uh, so what he is saying that we actually need to come out here and dig a relief channel. You know, when this wall of water comes this way, it would be, we need to keep the water from going to the water. If all the water goes to the bridge, the bridge is going to overflow and the house is going to get flooded. So he is, his recommendation is to actually build a little, uh, flood relief valve to shunt some of the water, this wall of water, to run the water down this way into my pond. And uh, this actually happened last spring, uh, but he says this is where you want the water. So now we got to get out here and actually dig an overflow channel from the creek. You know, you, it, you just can't win. I'm out here choking on fire smoke all week. I'm sitting here dealing with this crap. And I'm going to describe this is Sancho Panza's, uh, that is Sancho Panza's opinion of all this. So anyway, I want to thank Brother Kevin for uh, getting our internet out here. So I, in the middle of all this, I turn on the internet and find the uh, number one story on the planet today. Apparently, the news from China had not reached Yahoo News. Uh, from Detroit to Germany to Mumbai to the Finger Lakes of New York and now to China, climate change is worsening torrential downpours. The, the road guy said the, the critical uh, point for me, he says a three inch downpour, if it, if it pours down three inches in one hour, he says my house is going underwater, my truck and my camper are getting washed down the creek. Uh, he said if you have any belief that it might rain three inches in one hour to get the hell to high ground, take your truck, your camper, forget the house, nothing you can do about the house so anytime it rains three inches in one hour here at bugs in a jar farm i'm grabbing the little dog and getting the hell out of dodge but of course what if it happens in the middle of the night you know when you're sound asleep in the middle of the night in the pitch black dark so anyway this is your old climate refugee dealing with wildfires in oregon and uh Floods everywhere. So let's look at the number one story on the planet as I am dealing with this. Thanks to climate change, the Earth's atmosphere now holds more moisture than in decades past, which is in part leading to more frequent extreme rainfall events. Experts say the last few weeks alone have provided ample evidence to back up that assertion. So not even counting what the hell went down in China today. Just get over there and start looking at videos of flooding in China. If you want to, if anybody who does not understand what the apocalypse looks like, forget Germany looks like a bad hair day compared to China. Uh, up to seven inches of rain fell on parts of Germany over a 12-hour period last week, the equivalent of two months worth of rain for the region. Two months of precipitation 
in 12 hours. And of course, if that happens here, my house is gone. The downpour resulted in severe flooding that left nearly 200 dead, more than 700 injured, and more than 1,000 people still missing in Germany and surrounding nations. Uh, Germany's environmental minister making the astute observation, climate change has arrived in Germany. Yes. While touring areas ravaged by the flooding on Sunday, German Chancellor Angela Merkel said, we have to get faster in the fight against climate change. Yes, we have to get faster in the fight against climate change. Uh, the Mumbai, India International Airport reported more than nine inches of rain in 24 hours early Sunday. Of that total, eight of those inches fell in just six hours. More than 30 people were killed uh, across the city of 12 million people because of the flooding. Uh, this is an environment minister from India whose name I cannot pronounce, quote, we have been talking about climate change, and it is happening. Yes. A June 26 storm in Detroit, Michigan, unloaded six inches of rain over a five-hour period, leaving much of that city and its surroundings underwater. Uh, motorists were stranded on flooded roads, and homes were inundated. Uh... So I love this. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitner said the flooding showed it was time to, quote, address climate change by, quote, building resilient infrastructure that will keep us safe and keep our economy going. Yes, resilient infrastructure like the Grand Coulee Dam there. Uh, that is some of my resilient infrastructure here at Bugs in a Jar. So what is going on here? Uh, Book Herman, I'm sure you'll have a comment about this. As the Earth's average surface temperatures continue to rise, so does the amount of moisture being held in the atmosphere. Studies have shown for every 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit of warming, the atmosphere can hold 7% more moisture. Since pre-industrial times, the Earth has warmed by roughly two degrees. Um, so, I think they meant Fahrenheit there. Uh, I wish it would have been nice. So, we're talking that there's about 10% more rain uh, in the system than there was, uh, you know, a while back. Uh, <clears throat> The excess moisture is not the only factor, however, behind the extreme rainfall events. While India experiences heavy rains annually during the monsoon season, climate scientists have for years warned that extreme precipitation events have been on the rise thanks to the shifting weather patterns being caused by rising temperatures. In 2019, more than 1,200 people were killed and millions were displaced from flooding born of especially fierce rains. A new study published in Geophysical Research Letters found that climate change is often causing weather systems to move much slower, potentially leading to more severe downpours. This is Holly Fowler, a hydroclimatologist. Uh, quote, we think these storms in general will become slower moving in summer and autumn because of Arctic amplification. And that could be a whole other video about Arctic amplification. If you aren't, don't know what he's talking about there, uh, there's plenty of places to find that. Thanks to the rapid warming underway in Antarctica and the Arctic, where temperatures are rising faster than the rest of the planet, 
the jet stream is being destabilized. I think we've heard Paul talking about this. Uh, Brother Paul has been preaching the destabilized jet stream for years. As a result, traditional weather patterns have been altered. That jet stream disruption, scientists believe, is also a factor that has exacerbated the extreme drought conditions across the American West. Further east, flash flood warnings were issued over the weekend across a portion of the U.S. while that spanned from Cincinnati to Boston, an area where 55 million people, including Sam Mitchell and company, live. Portions of the Northeast, and I'm pretty sure this includes the Finger Lakes of New York, for portions of the Northeast have been five times wetter this year than the average July, and scenes of flooding posted to social media sites have become commonplace. Yes, on July 8th, more than an inch of rain fell in a single hour in New York City, inundating some subway stops and submerging some roadways. The deluge ranked as one of the 10 most intense cloudbursts in the last 80 years. And I was in New York in October of 1996. You can look this up. And it's when the Atlanta Braves were playing the Yankees on that day, sometime in the middle of October 1996. New York City, when I decided to be there, had the biggest amount of rain in, uh, in the 20th century. I think it was five inches of rain uh, in 1997. Uh, very heavy rainfall was seen in New York City yesterday. It was 1.56 inches in Central Park between the hours of 5 to 6 p.m., the eighth highest one-hour rainfall since 1943. Uh, as have been witnessed in Germany, Detroit, Mumbai, bugs in a jar farm, and now China and other places this year, inundating rains can quickly overtake infrastructure built for an age before climate change had begun to announce itself so loudly. In historic terms, the most rainfall ever recorded in a 24-hour period in the U.S. occurred in 2017 when Hurricane Harvey unloaded 42 inches of rain, the storm which parked itself over Texas and Louisiana for four days, eventually dumping more than 60 inches of rain is believed to have stalled out due to worsening jet stream fluctuations. A number have studies, number of studies have also linked that record setting rainfall event to what else? climate change. There you go. So uh, that is the report from the smoky skies. Let's go over on Yahoo News to look at those floods in China. I see that the number one news story has now changed to fire in Oregon, meaning the you know, the one making the smoke you, we are seeing right here in New York. Fire in Oregon is so large, it is creating its own weather. Un unpredictable winds, fire clouds that spawn lightning and flames that leap over fire breaks are confounding efforts to fight the blaze. Yes. This fire very well could become the biggest fire in world history, I think so. Uh, let's see. Well, it's early. I mean, these, these. Let's see if there's any updating news. Floods in China. 
today. All right. Oops, I guess my internet that I thought was out here is not out here. So we'll have to wait, but you can go find the floods in China elsewhere. But all I can think about is the flood and bugs in a jar farm. And uh, I have to start digging a flood overflow channel across my beautiful yard. I need to gouge out a, a big ditch to catch the wall of water. Hopefully, we'll go that way instead of through my house. I highly suggest you get out there and start digging flood control ditches while you still can. Bye guys.